This is an Illamade production, live on the Illamade network. To all our viewership, please eavesdrop. In the building today, I'm honoured to say we have Mr. Michael Francis joining us today. How are we doing, sir? You alright? Good to be here, Mo. Yes. Yeah, incredible. Honestly, as I said, you know, um, I have a bit of an unhealthy obsession when it comes to the Mafia, right? So to sit here with you today and obviously gain your insights is... is Pretty incredible for me. I feel a bit overwhelmed at this minute. So yeah, really appreciate your time. Michael. I appreciate that. For Thank sure. You. So if we begin talking about your father, now your father, Sonny Francis, of course, rest in peace. He ha was a very sort of high profile individual. Now you being his son, what was that like sort of growing up and having such a high profile father? Would you say? Well, yeah, I mean, my dad was, he was kind of like the John Gotti of his day, yeah. as far as media attention, law enforcement, you know, he was always under investigation always in the papers and the media at the time. So, you know, um, it was different from day one. And uh, he was a very well-respected guy, so there was For a sure. lot of perks that came with it. But there was also a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, rough times, I would say. Yeah. But uh, listen, I love my dad. You know, he was, he was a good father, a good husband to my mother, so it was, it was special. Mm, and I guess you spoke of an instance where, I guess, there was always police following your father, tailing him. Yes. And um, I guess you led them on a high-speed chase or to, to some regard. Yeah, tell us about that, because your father wasn't too happy when you did that, basically. No, he wasn't. He, uh, you know, they were following me. They must have thought it was him. Every right. once in a while, they'd give me a little hard time, too. So I just took them on a, you know, a wild chase. And uh, when I got back home, uh, they got out of the car and they went and rang my doorbell oh, wow. and told my father what I did. <laughs> and he got so upset with me. He said, do you realize who you're messing with? These people can put you away for life. And he got really upset. He said, don't mess with them. And, you know, which I was surprised. I thought he would say, hey, good job. You know, you took these guys out. <laughs> good but no, he was, he was upset about it. He didn't want me to get in trouble. For sure. Yeah. Now, um, unfortunately, I guess the law kind of came down on your dad. And he yeah. was uh, wrongly accused, I should say, of a string of armed robberies. And he went down for 50 years. Yes. And that was the, basically you made the conscious decision at that point that you want to join the Mafia yourself in order to help your father. So what was that conversation like when you, you told him, like, you know, I'm trying to get involved with this now? Well, it, it wasn't so much wanting to get involved in that, but I had become very close with Joe Colombo, who I knew my whole life. And uh, I started to meet a lot of my dad's friends. And they would say, Mike, if you don't you know, help your father out, he's going to die in prison, 50-year mm. prison sentence. Mm. So I went to see him in Leavenworth Penitentiary, and I said, Dad, I'm not going to school. If I don't help you out, you claim you're innocent. I believe you. If I don't help you, you're going to die in here. And he was a little upset. You know, he wanted me to go to school, be a doctor. That was mm. his hope for me. Yeah, because you were studying to be a doctor. I was studying, time. yeah. I was a pre-med yeah. student. And uh, I said, Dad, it's over. I, I, I don't have the head for that anymore. So. He kind of gave in because he knew I was a pretty headstrong kid. And he said, all right, but if you're going to be on the street, I want you on the street the right way. His mind was to become a member of his life. Mm -hmm. So he said to me, go home. Somebody will be in touch with you. Do whatever you're told. But he asked me one question. And he said, Mike, I got to ask you a serious question. And he says, what happens from this point depends upon your answer. And I said, what, Dad? He said, I want the truth. I said, you always get the truth out of me. He said, if you ever had to kill anybody, could you do it? And I thought about it for a minute, and I said, yeah, under the right conditions, Dad, I could do it. And he said, that's the right answer. Go <laughs> home, and we'll take it from there. Interesting, yeah. interesting. I mean, what, what a question to ask, right? <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised. Yeah. You know, I didn't expect that. But, uh, and I didn't just answer. I mean, I thought about it for a moment. Right. And uh, I said, no, if I, if under the right conditions, I could yeah, do it. Yeah, if you had to, and pretty much. It. And so, in, in, in your initial sort of induction days, I guess, rolling around with, you know, different wise guys and, and, you know, getting, you know, acclimated with the mob a little bit, mm -hmm. was there anything that you saw that made you think, like, maybe I'm a bit way in, like, way over my head with this whole, you know, with the life pretty much early on? Would you no, say? I, I never thought that way. You know, I'm a, and I want to be clear on this, I'm a pretty confident guy Definitely. in myself. <laughs> For sure. Not arrogant. <laughs> There's a difference between arrogance and confidence, sure. but you know, I know normally if I undertake something, uh, I'm going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing, you know, one incident really kind of got me a little bit, and that's when a, a very dear friend of mine was, was murdered, and uh, under the wrong conditions, I believe. And that, you know, made me think about the life, and mm -hmm. this was prior to my becoming a made guy, but not enough to stop me. You yeah, know, it just gave me some thoughts about it, you know. Right. So that that's when pretty much it, it got pretty real at that point. You was like, got okay. very real. Yeah. Yes, very sure. real. Because it was unexpected, 
And I thought it was unjust when I found out what happened, but I said, hey, if this is the life, this is the life. This is the life, yeah. very much. And so if we're talking to be a made man, now it's often speculated that it's either one of the two things that get you made. Either you're an incredible, incredible earner or you're just a reliable killer, so to speak, right? So obviously not to get into the murder side of things, but you're someone, you knew how to make a dollar pretty much. So was that the, the actual reason that got you sort of inducted? No, I got to be honest with you uh, on all of these things. You know, I was proposed by my dad. Right. There's a lot of nepotism in that life. You know, Joe Colombo brought his sons in, Persico brought his sons, right. Gambino brought his relatives, right. obviously for security reasons, because they feel, hey, it's family, they're never going to turn, you know. Uh, but you have to be, you have to be able, you don't have to be an earner. Mm. As a matter of fact, we had 115 made guys in the Colombo family. Out of the 115, maybe 20 of us were real earners. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other 85 were, you know, just trying to, you know, uh, 95 were trying to make their own way, get a, whatever. And, mm. you know, they weren't, they weren't really earners. But you got to be capable to do what you're told when you're told to do it. You mm. can't refuse and you got to do it. Mm. So that's really you know, the basis for you becoming a member in that life. Definitely. So you were pro proposed by your father. Yes. And at the time, your father was the underboss to Joe Colombo. That's correct, yes. So um, when he proposed you, I guess, you know, you have the whole ceremony thing. So yeah. if we can talk about the actual ceremony uh, as far as who was there and, you know, how it sort of went. Yeah, it was uh, Halloween night, 1975, that I was inducted. I was one of the first guys when the books reopened because mm -hmm. they had the books closed for about 20 years. They weren't bringing guys in. And uh, a very solemn ceremony. It was dimly lit room late at night. We were in, uh, actually, uh, Joey Colombo's son, Anthony, had a uh, catering hall in Brooklyn mm -hmm. uh, called the Casa Bella, I believe it was. And so we met there that night. I was told in the morning, uh, you know, put on a suit and come to Brooklyn, which was not unusual. They told me that all the time. But you never know when this is going to happen. Yeah. It's a surprise because security reasons. So uh, we met late at night, it was close to midnight, and there were six of us that got made that night. And we walked into a room individually, boss was seated, head of like a horseshoe configuration, right. underboss, consigliere, his left and right, and all the captains were alongside of them. And this was Joe Colombo, the, the boss? No, of... Joe Colombo had been shot, seriously oh, right. wounded. So right. a new boss, Tom DeBella was his name, Tom he DeBello. took over, right. yeah. And I walked down the aisle, stood in front of the boss, held out my hand. He took a knife right here, cut my finger. Some blood dropped on the floor. It's a blood oath. Cupped my hands, took a picture of a saint, Catholic altar card, put it in my hand, lit it a flame. Didn't hurt. It burned quickly. It was merely symbolic. Mm -hmm. And he said, tonight, Michael Francis, you are born again into a new life, into Cosa Nostra. Violate what you know about this life. Betray your brothers. You will die. Burn in hell like this saint is burning in your hands. Do you accept? Yes, I do. That's it. Incredible. Fast. So literally you've got a few minutes, I would say. A few minutes, very fast. Yeah, incredible. They don't, they don't beat around the bush. And, <laughs> yeah, straight yeah, to the point. Straight to the point. <laughs> no, really incredible. Yeah. So now you're a made man, and uh, I guess one of the highlights in, I guess, your career a little bit would m most definitely have to be the gasoline thing, right? Yes. So I guess how it works, I I've heard you mention previously, People approach you with different proposals as far as how to make money. Now, obviously, with the Mafia, they have a lot of influence, you know. They can make things happen, you know, put, put things at ease in order to have things sort of, you know, work, work out for whoever is, is trying to get mm -hmm. their business sort of appropriated, right? So someone came up to you and proposed this gasoline, uh, I guess, scheme. Pretty much. It was a guy that had a small gas operation uh, out in Long Island. Right. And there was two guys from another family that were shaking him down. They were extorting him for money. Mm -hmm. So he came to me. I was kind of the guy on Long Island. It was pretty well known there. So he came to me for help. And initially, I chased him. I said, I don't want to be involved with this. I, don't, I didn't know who he was. I checked him out a little bit. Wasn't, you know, wasn't thrilled with what I heard. Uh, but he was very persistent. Right. Kept coming back, kept coming back. And then finally, one day, he comes back and he says, I think I have a way for us to make money. And he says, I need your help. I said, well, what are you talking about? He said, well, we can defraud the government out of tax on every gallon of gasoline. Now, the government was my enemy. So when I heard that, it was like music to my ears, right? Okay, talk to me about it. So he kind of laid out a little plan. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, we went into business together. We formed a new company. I got rid of the two guys that were bothering I made them go away, the two guys that were bothering him. And uh, we started out. And I put a guy with him 
to watch him because I didn't know much about him. Right. He was a, very close to me. He was Vinny the Butcher. He was my butcher, right? right. Big guy, big scar across the top of his head. You know, <laughs> nasty looking guy. And I said, just watch Larry, his name was. It's, let's see if we really have something here. About uh, two weeks later, he comes to my house Saturday morning, things, uh, knocks on the door. He used to bring me meat every Saturday, right? So he comes and he's got a box on his shoulder. I said, Vinny, what are, we, what are you doing with all this meat? What are we having, a party? I don't know about it. He says, hey, chief, it ain't meat. He says, come in the kitchen. So we go in the kitchen, puts the box down on the table. He said, this is the first week's take in the gas business. It was $320,000. So he got my attention, right? We grew that uh, over a seven-year period into uh, between 8 and $10 million a week. A week. A week. Incredible. Yeah. And so uh, you went to, I guess the boss at the time was Carmine Persico. Yeah. And you went over to him and I guess his initial reaction when you told him about these numbers was he thought you was dealing drugs. Yeah, I said to him, listen, Junior, I'm going to show you more money than you ever saw before. This is when I realized what I had. Yeah. And I said, uh, uh, you know, he said, we don't do drugs. I said, it's not drugs. You know I don't get involved in drugs. I said, it's gas. It's gas. You know, you know. I said, leave it to me, right? <laughs> I said, but here's the deal. You can't let anybody else get involved with me on this. I said, when everybody gets involved, they're all going to want a piece of this because it'll be a lot of money. We're going to blow it like anything else. I said, you got to keep it all here. You got to make me win every argument. No politics involved. I says, and I'll make you wealthy. So he said, show me. Mm. And I showed him. And you showed him. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I never lost an argument, Mo. Never. Yeah. Never lost an argument. Gotti, all the guys that try to yeah. get involved. I kept them all at a distance. You know, guys who wanted to get involved, I said, look, I'll sell you gas. You make sure we get paid. For sure. I said, but you can't be involved in the operation. Incredible. And I can imagine, you know, the kind of money you were kicking up. I mean, there's no way. I'd, no, you, everyone would back you at that point, right? Yeah. You, you, uh, when you're sending in $2 million a week, it's a lot of loyalty. Definitely. Buy, yeah. No problem. For sure.